Hello and welcome to another 2D Sunday-ish. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Ghouls and Ghosts, Ghosts and Goblins saga and how I would just love them to give me a great double jump. And to be honest, at one point they did. Um, I don't need the game to be easier. I think it's a great game, but I just the jump just doesn't sit right with me. And it's, it's never sat right with me, to be honest. But we're going to kick off basically with all, well, with Ghosts and Goblins. And I'm going to go through the games that I've played um, in the order that I've actually played them. And give you my thoughts on why I'm not too fond of the jumping in this game. Alright, so let's get to it. Okay, first up we've got the classic Ghost and Goblins. Um, this is what started it off for me. I was never very good at this game. Um, it spanked me mercilessly. But anyway, so you can attack forward, um, you can jump up. Uh, that's mostly your range, to be honest, which isn't bad, especially for the time this game came out in. You cannot jump and attack upwards or underneath you, so you can't throw out any weapons behind you. When you jump, you can turn around, but the direction of your jump is still in the initial jump direction. So even though you turn around, you was, if you jump to your right, you turn around to fire to your left, you will still be, your, mom, your momentum will still be going to the right, unfortunately. It doesn't, your jump doesn't automatically just go in the direction that you are now facing, which is a shame. So you can't alter your jump once you jump, basically. So yeah, this is me just going through certain stages of the game. Um, I still reckon that this game, to this day, still looks all right, to be honest. Especially for when it came out, I do um, like it. It's just that his jump is a little bit too low for me. And it doesn't go very far. Most gaps you can do, but some jumps are a little bit tight. Uh, this is the first boss. I'm going to show this boss at the end of my video as well. Um, you're going to see what I mean by that. If you can, why are you showing the boss twice? But yeah, I'm going to show this boss again at the very end of my video. Okay. I do feel that this game has certain points where the jumps just seem a little bit unfair. Um, it's got that annoying Castlevania knockback as well with the jumps, which all games need to get rid of, in my opinion. I, look, look, there you go, look at that knockback. I mean, luckily I made that there. Only because of where I happen to be. But um, yeah, I'm just not a fan of that knockback. Now I'm going to move on to Ghouls and Ghosts. This was the first game in the series which I actually owned. I had the Mega Drive version. Oddly enough, um, it took me three years to complete. Uh, myself and my brother, we had the Japanese version. Uh, at the time, we called it Great Imports in the UK because we imported the Japanese version. Well, it was just in one of those um, small owned um, little import shops that used to have around the corners, especially if you lived in East London at the time. Yeah, so we, we bought the Japanese version. Obviously, it was all in Japanese. So we thought we played it and we completed it. That's what we thought we did. Only to find out years later in reading the magazines that you had to go through the game twice. We didn't know that because we couldn't read, oh, I don't know, is it kanji or, or um, whatever the Japanese um, text is. So yeah, so we had to put it on one Sunday and we spent literally the whole Sunday going through the game twice because it was hard as nails when I mean, we were kids. We eventually did it and I actually completed the Megdrive version. I never played it again after that though. But anyway, let's move on to what I think about this version. Alright, um, for Ghouls and Ghosts, in the series, or the games in the series that I've played, I haven't played like the GBA versions or anything, I reckon this is the second best version still to this day. I think the mechanics just feel great. Um, so let's get to the mechanics of this game, especially the jumping. Right, um, obviously you can attack forward and behind you. You can now 
when you jump up vertically, you can fire upwards. When you jump, before you come down, you can fire underneath you. And there you go, there's attacking forwards. And you can tap behind you, obviously, as well. So it's just nice that now you can attack in four directions rather than just two from the previous game. Um, the jump arc, it seems bigger to me. Um, you can still uh, turn around. But unfortunately, when you do a vertical jump, you can't move left or right in a vertical jump. As It's a bit annoying. It's one of the things I thought they would change for the sequel. Would it be nice if you could? Because sometimes you do a static jump and you just want to move slightly, but you can't. But yeah, um, but apart from that little niggle, I, this is, like I said, my second favorite game in the series that I've played. I really do like it. It's just a really solid game and it looks great as well. I prefer the jumping arc that he has here. The jumps at a decent distance. The game still rock hard. Um, they punish you every point. And here's, look, here we go. Look, look. Um, there's an enemy underneath me. You jump to make sure it doesn't touch you. You can fire underneath you. That was a nice addition to this game. And I feel that, especially for the time, the jump wasn't too bad. Like I said before, it would be nice if I could change my jump arc once I started jumping. But wherever you jump in that direction, you've got to make sure that, right, that's where I want to go. Quicksand underneath me. Making it very difficult. I, I'm assuming you can kill that beast there that comes from the quicksand. I don't recall if I ever did it before, um, but I'm assuming you can. Because nothing's invincible in the game, so. Here we go. This section, um, I put this in there just to show you that uh, it can get tedious with jumping. But you need to get through these stages and it teaches you that, look, you have to do this because on the harder stages, you're going to need to know everything about Sir Arthur or what he's got to offer. These demon things, they are the bane of my life in this series. I mean, look, he just knocks my armour off. They got this immaculate dodging. Um, I'm not too sure if this is how you defeat them. But the way I find out is that if I turn around and they eventually try and sneak up behind me and that's when I hit them. If there is another way, let me know, but that's the only way I know to defeat them. I've never found another way. I believe this is the second boss, this, this fire thing. Um, I actually do like most of the boss battles in the game. Um, some of them are just, I find, just ridiculously hard. And then at other times they're just... Oh, that wasn't too bad, that was easy. But hey. That's ghouls and ghosts for you. Um, it's a bit more traversal on uh, later stages. This bit's quite tricky, but it's actually a really good stage, to be honest. Um, this is where you need to get your jumping down, pat, and hopefully have a good weapon. That's another thing of this series. If you happen to get a pants weapon for the stage and you can't change it, Ah, oh, the struggles, the struggles. They were just so bad. Um, this boss here, for this footage, um, I had to do this boss, no word of a lie, about 20 times. I, it was just frustrating because I accidentally picked up this weapon. I don't like this weapon, uh, the blue flame. Some people might say, oh, it's really good for X, Y, Z stage. I don't care, I don't like it. I hate the flames and it always seems to give me the flames. So yeah, I got stuck with this and I couldn't change it. I accidentally got this weapon, kind of got hit into it. But hey, look at that. The fluke that I got hit there and it worked out in my favor. All right, now for a game which, ah, oh God. I don't understand why this game gets so much praise. Super Ghouls and Ghosts. I never played it until I think it was in this collection on the PS2 in around about 98 or whatever it was. I, no, PS2 didn't come out in 98. When did I get, anyway, the first time I played this was on the PS2 collection. There's like some sort of Capcom classics thing. And I was like, oh, this game got hyped to talk about. I, I want to, um, I want to play this game. Why, why do people love this version of this game? This, I personally feel there's nothing super about it. I think that 
Ghouls and Ghosts is the superior version. Arcade and Mega Drive. I... <sighs> yeah, I... I'm not feeling this game. I'm sorry, I played it for a bit, I just couldn't get into it. But it does have one redeeming feature, for me anyway. And that is they introduced a double jump, which I think a double jump in here is fantastic. It's what I wanted in the previous game with Ghouls and Ghosts. So you jump and jump again. Brilliant. And um, they've still got the annoying thing of even if you do turn around, um, the jump doesn't take you in that direction now. You're still going in the direction that you initially jumped in. So you can't change your arc in midair, even after a double jump. Uh, the biggest no-no, they took away you cannot fire upwards or underneath you. Or if, if you can, and my version is balked, someone tell me. But I couldn't get it to work. So yeah, that's that there. Funny thing, when I was playing this game, at one point I actually reset the PS2 because um, I thought my controller was broken, the D-pad. I was like, why are you not firing upwards when I jump? Or when I, when I double jump over an enemy, why are you firing downwards? What is wrong with my D-pad? The game actually made me doubt my own hardware. I mean, look, look at this, look, here comes a wolf. Generally I fire upwards, no, and I died. To hell with this game, to hell with it. I just don't understand why I do that. I mean, it looked like they tried, to, they knew what they were doing, and they thought, oh, we're gonna give you something a little bit different. We're gonna give you weapons that have arcs, so you don't miss it. And when you get different suits, um, it gives you, it powers up that weapon like here. But I just don't like that. They they need to give me back my upwards attacks and my downwards attacks. They were just better. I don't like that omission and that's just my opinion really okay here we go now this is what i feel is the best game in the series it was on that little known console or handheld console known as the playstation portable aka the psp this game is ultimate ghosts and goblins and it deserves the title of ultimate this is where capcom and this game series peaked in my personal opinion this is wonderful i mean okay look you can fire ahead of you you've got your double jump it's just great look at it and i can all of a sudden i can start firing down and it breaks the arc of the jump i don't keep on floating in that direction i have control over my arc now for the first time i can control where when i'm going to land near enough near enough within reason not completely but yeah it's just fantastic. I mean, look how look how big those jumps are. It's just great. Ah, oh, it's just it's just so so versatile. And of course, look, you can still fire um, upwards. They brought it back. You've got it back now, so that's nice. Not like that that super nonsense on the um, SNES. Ah, oh, dear me. He's trying to throw something at me. Nah, just jump over that. Okay, look at this. Big double jump, uh-oh. Turn around, bam, another jump. And I can hold on to ledges. This guy, now, nah, not this guy. So Arthur is now so versatile. You have so much control over him. It's great. It is just great. And look, I can fire downwards in the air as well. Yes, unfortunately this game, um, I think it's 30 frames per second, unfortunately, but still. It just, oh, that dreaded blue flame. It's just what, to me, the series needed. It was still hard. Um, they added so much stuff. I mean, look at that. Look at the versatility in the air. This is the double jump that this series needs. Or sometimes you can even get triple jumps. It's so good. You have shields, you have everything. I mean, let's just rewind that. No, no, let's just go back. Let's just go back. And look what happened there. Slow it down. Okay. Here we go. Throwing out these blue flames. Once again, I got hit into the blue flames. Don't know why I have this. Double jump really high. Throw them out. Whoops.
what's you in a bit of a pickle here, a bit of trouble. Cool. Time to get away. Big double jump. Bam, look. Change where I'm going with another jump. It just it just makes sense. It just makes sense that they did this. NASA Alpha is really versatile. This is where this game peaked, in my opinion. There's almost no negatives to this. If this should get a HD remaster, a 4K remaster on every system going, this is what we needed, people. This is Capcom giving us great double jumps, great jumps, great triple jumps. This is ultimate. And now we're on to the reason why I made this video. Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. I'm not happy with this game. I'm just not. I'm sorry Capcom, I don't like it. Here we go. All right, so you can jump and fire above you and underneath you, which is good, they didn't take that out. Um, you've got your jump. You, you can still, I believe, yeah, yeah you, you got your jump. Um, unless it's unlockable, uh, I don't believe there's a double jump in this game at all. Uh, yeah, so um, there's that. Um, in your static jumps, you can't change your angle of your jumps like all the other versions of the game, unfortunately. Um, his walking speed's a little bit slow. His jump arc isn't bad. It's not the best, but as you can see, you turn around, but, but you can't change your jump arc again. We've, we've gone back to that now. You don't have anything where you can do that. So that's rather annoying. Um, it's almost like a step backwards. I know this is Ghost and Goblin's Resurrection. So I, I'm assuming that this is a reimagining of most ideas from the original Ghosts and Goblins and some of the ideas from Ghouls and Ghosts. But why didn't they take some of the ideas from Ultimate Ghouls and Ghosts? Um, yeah, it just... Yeah, I, I don't know. It's To me, it's a step backwards. This, I think the foundation for this game should have been Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins, personally. But it's not. And this is what we have to deal with. All right, let's get to it. Obviously, the gameplay and everything you see here is all my opinions, and my god, those Grim Reapers are fast. Um, it's very obviously it's subjective because it's an opinion, it's not objective. So, even I don't like the, um, the jumps in some of these games, and Super Ghouls and Ghosts isn't my thing, and Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection isn't really my cup of tea, I don't personally feel that like they're bad games, they're just not for me. Um, I can still see, objectively, I can still see the good in these games. They, they still, they're very tight, they play well. I just feel that Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins on the PSP, by the way, that PSP footage that you saw earlier on is actually PSP footage, it's not an emulator. Um, I just feel that that was the peak and they should have built upon that. Um, I just, I think the control for him is, is gone back too far. Just because it was like that in the 80s or the early 90s, I don't feel that we needed to go back to it. Time's moved on. I think it, the control of these type of games changed for the better. So yeah, I just feel that Capcom should have given us a great and wonderful double jump in this game. Because most of the other things in this game aren't too bad, to be honest. I mean, his run speed there, stroke walk speed, whatever the hell, his movement speed on the ground, it's just a bit too slow for me. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, I think they've got, most of the stuff in this game seems to be okay, but if I don't like the control of the character, it just, it just puts me off. Um, yeah, and so I was looking forward to this game, I really was, but it's, oh, I don't know, frustrating, I would say, it's frustrating, that's what I would say about this game, it just frustrates me. Because I really did love the PSP version. And then 
to come from that to this. <sighs> yeah. But like I said, this game's still good. It's got some good ideas, but for me, it just doesn't... It just... just doesn't do it for me. Um, it's a missed opportunity. So yeah. Um, you can upgrade your suits and things like that in this game. Just like some of the other later versions of the other games. Um, it's got like little mini challenge rooms here and there. Um, the weapons that you want. Why is it always trying to give me a blue flame? I don't understand the, the blue flame. Just give me a better weapon. Don't try and give me that nonsense. Just, just don't. So at the beginning of the video, I said we're going to show you. I'm going to go back to that boss. And this is that boss again. But the uh, Ghost of Goblin's Resurrection version. And like I said, subjectively, I may not like the controls in the game. But objectively, you can't... You can't say that they didn't rework this game really well in other aspects. I mean, this boss fight is far superior to the original Ghost of Goblins version of it. It's actually a really good boss fight. I mean, I think this is the second time I actually got to this boss. Um, I didn't know how to fight before. I didn't, I didn't even know. It was gonna, I thought it was going to be that green ogre in an armor suit shooting at... You know, he's got his head on his hands. I thought that was going to be the boss, not this. So, yeah, it's. Um, I just think this is a cool boss fight cool game for most people unfortunately just not for me just because of control I mean look at that movement and run speed he's just mate you're running why, why not just give him a dash why doesn't he have a dash or a super run it doesn't have to be ultimate um, or not ultimate um, just a constant dash you can have a little bar a meter or you can have two dashes and then you can't dash again for a certain amount of seconds like a cool down effect but that wasn't added. I think something like that could have been put into this game. Um, I don't know if you're going to give him a double jump. How about he collects? Well, he's got magic there. I don't know if there's a magic in the game where he gets wings and he can double jump or something. If he if he can, let me know. I didn't get far enough to access that. I probably should have googled it, but I didn't. Um, but yeah. It's just a, a shame, really. Um, I didn't play this game too much, to be honest, after this, because I was just so annoyed with what they did. But, like I said, most people I know probably like it if they're into the family of games, the Ghouls of Ghosts, Ghosts of Goblins family of games. But for me, this one's a, a no no. But there you go, there's the boss. And. He's now done, he's cooked, he's beaten. Nice catch. And that's me. So, all I can say is I'll see you on the next 2D Sunday-ish. So if you, if you could like, and a cheeky little subscribe for me. I'll see you next time. Peace.